Hey guys, this is Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist. I'm changing it up today. I have a special guest uh, on the show and uh, she's been living with us. She is my dear sister-in-law, Mika Matsumoto. And I just wanted to uh, discuss our journeys uh, becoming a physician, a medical, an MD, and then also she's on her way of becoming uh, a dentist. So she's a third year dental student. So I'll have Mika just quickly introduce herself. Hi, I'm Mika. I'm a third year dental student at UW. Um, I did my undergrad at University of Hawaii at Manoa and I did a BA in biology. And I think it was overall a really good major to choose because it gets your prerequisites out of the way. And also my schedule wasn't too hectic so that I could study for the DAT also during school. Perfect. Mika, uh, that was great. That was a great introduction. What resources for studying for the DAT would you recommend for the audience? Um, DAT Bootcamp all the way. I pretty much used all of their resources. Um, they have a really nice like study guide on their website of what to do each day. Um, so I use pretty much what they recommended like Chad's videos, Dat Destroyer, and they have some videos on their website as well. Um, the only downside is that it's kind of expensive, but I think it's worth it. Great, great, okay, awesome. And then how many months or weeks did you study for the DAT? I studied for about three months. Um, the first two months was kind of on and off. The last month was really hardcore and I would say I would probably only need like two months okay. looking back. Great, great, great. And you took it only once? Yes. The test? Great. Once. And on average, do you think, and you probably don't know the stats, but do people take it usually once or twice or how many times have your peers taken it? Um, I've only heard of people taking it once, but okay. if you need to take it again, I think it's a three month period or something, but I haven't heard of anyone who needed to take it. Right. And time. I remember the MCAT was very expensive, so I'll probably put up an updated price here of how much the DAT is. So you ideally want to get it done once, get it over with, score well. So Mika did a great job. And then uh, can you talk about just general pearls in applying for dental school? And uh, when did you apply or what time of the year did you apply? I applied in the summer of my junior year. I remember the applications opened in either May or June. And right when it opened, I had everything ready, like my personal statement, um, letters of recommendation. I asked um, probably several months before at least. Some advice I have is to first of all apply early. Um, there's like probably due dates on the application and I'd probably just ignore that because the sooner you turn it in, the sooner you can get a call back for an interview. Um, secondly, work in a dental office. I think it's much different than shadowing because you're actually immersed and engaged in what you're doing and you're not just kind of off to the side in the background. Thirdly, I would see if your college has a pre-dental club. I think that really benefited me because I got to see other dental students and work with dentists in the community. My last advice is to find good mentors. So shout out to Dr. Kumasaka, Dr. Furuya, and Dr. Imanaka for helping me along the way. Okay, well, thank you, Mika, for being on the show. Uh, I keep calling this a show on uh, today's episode. So for my segment, I just wanted to briefly talk about my journey. I also went to the University of Hawaii for undergraduate studies. I majored in biology as well. I did a BA in it and I minored in art. So I liked the balance of having science with art, uh, art history. I really liked pastel drawing work. And so it was really nice to have that balance in college. And I also want to echo Mika's uh, advice on finding a good mentor. That's so important. And that brings me to the other point of, she said, work in a dental office. For me, I wanted to really test and see if I could really handle seeing blood and surgery. So the best decision I made was I volunteered at Kaiser Permanente Hawaii at Mauna Loa, uh, their hospital. And I was a candy striper where I wore a blue polo shirt, khaki pants, did all these, uh, did all this HIPAA training and uh, I was able to be a volunteer in the ENT or otolaryngology and plastic surgery department at uh, Kaiser Permanente. And I did data entry, but in doing so, I also uh, work with other surgeons there. And I was so fortunate to meet Dr. John Imada. Uh, I haven't spoken to you in a while, but I just want to shout out to Dr. Imada for being a great mentor while I was a pre-medical student. and. Uh, every summer for four summers straight after I graduate from high school, I volunteered at Kaiser Permanente 
And I was able to shadow uh, and observe a lot of surgeries and, um, you know, OR time in the ambulatory surgical center. So I was very uh, fortunate to have that experience because that really drove me into applying to medical school. And it really solidified my decision to uh, pursue medical school. And while I was in medical school working really hard, I would think about my time at Kaiser and it really would push me and motivate me to say, hey, let's stay up and let's study really hard or let's try and honor that 30 year clinical rotation. So it really carried forward, it, this benefits really carried forward uh, throughout my career, I'd say. Dr. Yamada was a great mentor in terms of the MCAT. Uh, just to be honest, you know, at the SATs when I was in high school, I didn't uh, do a prep course. I did a big red book that I would just casually go through and my uh, SAT scores were, you know, average. Uh, my MCAT score did do uh, well enough to get into medical school, but I did take a MCAT course and the MCAT course, uh, I would definitely recommend for people because when I think about standardized testing, I... Uh, Think it's like a I think it's not just you're either good or bad at it so to tell my story um, you know average for SATs average for MCATs stellar like 95th percentile up for my uh, medical school standardized examinations step one step two step three I did very well for those examinations and I would say it's all about repetition practice you have to stay uh, you can't just have a mental block and just you know, throw yourself under the bus by saying, I'm not good at standardized testing. Similar to uh, people saying, I can't be a doctor because I can't deal with blood. I said that when I was a very young kid and my dad just squashed that way of thinking very quickly. And so I went into my, you know, uh, volunteer work at Kaiser Permanente with an open mind. I'm so glad I did because if I had thought throughout my life, I, I'm not into blood, I would never have become a doctor and even a dermatologist. Uh, where I deal with blood every day. In terms of standardized testing though, you know, you have to be stay with it. You have to do a lot of practice tests. You can't just sit leisurely on your bed in your in your bedroom and just flip through a big red book and expect to do well or expect to do stellar, right? So, so for doing your MCAT, you know, try to do a lot of practice questions. I don't think they have the essay part anymore. In terms of like the science part of things, you have to do multiple science questions and get used to it. And you almost have to go into the test already knowing what kind of questions they're gonna ask and while you're answering the questions or while you're reading the question, you should be so good. You can almost, uh, you can almost think of the answer in your head before you're reading the multiple choice uh, uh, options down below. So um, the other thing for, uh, for applying to medical school, I know people are, uh, are into research. I didn't do any research to be honest. My whole goal or my whole um, way of going at it was to be diverse diversify just like you want to diversify your finances your your investments you want to diversify your resume or your cv your curriculum vitae um, you want to go in with a lot of ammo so i did student government in high school and that carried on to being a senator of the college of arts and sciences in my college uh, and or at university of hawaii and then i also was a tutor for with, uh, i was a tutor for chemistry and physics I would also take notes for uh, students with disabilities at my college, and I would read uh, textbooks and turn into audio files for the visually impaired students. And so I was very diverse. I did a lot of volunteer work. I was very involved with my honor societies, and I would do as many volunteer opportunities as I could. The other special thing that I did was I went on a medical trip to India. I got a nice scholarship while I was in college. I had a full ride. Uh, for my last two years of college, and they gave me a stipend to go on an international trip. And I plan, and I was able to go on a trip to India with a group of pre-medical students. And it was one of the best trips of my life because I was able to shadow and see more surgeries. I was able to see the outpatient life. I was able to see what doctors in India, you know, how they interacted with their patients, how they treated uh, patients with different medications that we don't have in the United States. So it was very, it was very eye-opening. I also got to see just really, um, you know, the true rural medicine where seeing patients with very, very little access to healthcare, I would, I saw a little girl with a bad burn on her, her extremity and she traveled for hours just to see uh, an outpatient family medicine doctor. 
who had to treat her burn wounds. And it was just very sad. And I'm just thinking about her all the time. And I even incorporated that experience into my personal statements for medical school and even for dermatology residency. So those experiences, you never know where it'll take you. You'll never know how it'll affect you and how you could use that material for your personal statements throughout your life. Now I'm, I'm pretty removed from the whole application process from medical school, but I do recall uh, applying in June of my junior year, finished my India trip in the spring of my junior year, and then I finished up and going before starting my senior year, I did, uh, I was working on my application for medical school. And I would recommend, yeah, definitely apply broadly. Uh, and, you know, it's very expensive. So, so taking the MCAT is very expensive. I couldn't afford to take the MCAT again. So make sure to do well on the MCAT. Try to do it once, like Mika said, and then also just be uh, strategic on where you apply, apply broadly. Uh, if you have the money, try to apply broadly and try to go to any every interview that you can go to. So just some quick, uh, just quick tips from a recent graduate from undergrad. She's now a third year dental student at UW. I have been removed from the whole undergraduate studies for, for quite some time. Uh, but I just want to throw some pearls and just want to share a little bit of my journey with you today uh, because everyone's different. I like to diversify. Some people like to find a niche and a research, have a strong research background in a certain thing. And I think that's great. Um, and I hope you all uh, find that this video was helpful in some way and good luck with the application process this summer. Take care.